Good evening, everybody. This is Lynette, your girl from DALS Credit Solutions. Today is Tuesday, June the 30th. Credit Tip Tuesday, June the 30th. Can't believe it's the end of the month already. Giving people time to come on and see how everybody's doing and seeing how, seeing how, you know, how your week went. Did you accomplish any of your goals? Anything of that nature? It is 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hi, beautiful. How are you? And it's 6.30 Central Pacific Time, and I don't know what time it is everywhere else, but I want to get everybody on. Today is Tuesday, June the 30th, last month, day of the month. I can't believe it's June already. It's flying. Give you guys time to come on, um, like, share, get people on, get people motivated to come on and um, see how y'all days are going. Uh oh, let's see. So how's everybody surviving COVID? It's really bad. It's getting worse. Um, you know, just you guys, you know, try to stay safe out here. Let's see. Everybody that's on, please share. We give people time to come on. Again, this is your girl, Lynette. D-A-L-S Credit Solutions. June 30th, Credit Tip Tuesday. Let me see here. So anybody that's on, like, share. I'm trying to get it shared to my page. Tell everybody good afternoon. Good evening, rather. I'm, I'm, I'm normally, like, I hate to say it, not on time, but today I was making it my business to be on time. Let me see if I can get this to my personal page as well. Let's see here. I'm trying to share it to my um, personal page. So give some time, people, for, to come on and see how my day is going, see how things are holding up during this pandemic. I believe they want to shut down again. We need you guys to get prepared. Let's see. Let's put it on my page. There we go. Mm. Share it to the public. All right. So it must be on my timeline. So I just wanted to say hello, everyone. This is your girl again, Lynette, um, from DALS Credit Solutions. Today is Tuesday, June 30th, Credit Tip Tuesday. Topic today is, you guys have the floor. Um, so I want to say hi, everybody that's coming on. Um, let me know which state you guys are calling from, I mean, tuning in from, and, you know, let me know how y'all doing out there. <laughs> Anybody want to share, please share, like, you know, it's so important. Everybody get this, um, uh, get this, um, info. Hi, Miss Kate, Miss Reese. Hi, Miss Reese. How are you? So I do credit tip Tuesday, every Tuesday at 7 PM, not always on time. Please forgive me. Um, to give out free knowledge on credit. Um, last week we spoke on credit cards the week prior we spoke on understanding the numbers um, the week prior um, we spoke about um, the do's of don'ts of disputing um, today you know I want to give you you guys a chance to engage um, with me today as far as asking questions what questions do you have about your credit your credit reports, you don't have to, um, you know, tell your score or anything like that because that's no one's business. But, you know, if you have questions and you can't afford a credit restoration service, ask the questions. This is what I come on live every Tuesday at 7 to give as much knowledge that I can for you guys to honestly, you know, begin the processes on your own. Um, 
so you guys checking in i see somebody from alabama my dirty south i love y'all you guys have supported me so much and i'm beyond grateful shout out to the state of alabama um pa all over you guys have made d-a-l-s credit solutions what it is today i'm beyond humble um i have a mentoring program as well a couple of my mentees are on watching um the knowledge is power is so important i'm beyond proud of my whole crew you know that are under my mentoring program and you know you guys you have the floor um again a couple weeks prior we talked about the numbers a lot of people don't understand how to read credit reports and things like that so you know i want to shoot shoot me some questions you shoot questions i give out knowledge all of the times i'm always talking so please ask questions oh shout out to ashanti queen she got me a shirt that says, make your credit great again. Ask me how. Anybody need any bling t-shirts, please shop. Please see Ashanti Queen. She's from Alabama as well. Anybody want to talk about anything? Topic? Just throw a topic out there. Guys, don't have to be shy. This stuff is free. Then you come in my inbox. I'm like, well, I have to serve you a... a charge you a, a consultation fee this is the time you can get all the knowledge that you can get for absolutely free anybody that's coming on please like share um uh, with on your page to different groups so people know that i am tuned in for credit tip tuesday let me see here All right, let me see. All right, so anybody want to throw me a topic? Any topic? Let me see here. I'm going to get some more people to come on, have people come on. Hi, Therese. How are you, babe? Again, we just tuning in, you know, trying to get people to warm up to me and ask questions, these free questions about credit. Uh, yay, I made it one time. I know. Jesus, so bad for me. I always come on a little late. Something always happens on Tuesdays. I just need to get better organized on Tuesdays, what my daughter was saying. Get organized. Get, get yourself together. So, Latrice, I know you, I know you, you know, I'm, you know, so I'm, you're pretty warmed up to me. Throw a topic out there that you would want me to speak about so people can, um, you know, um, you know, get some insight on what, what do you feel like the world needs to understand and know about credit? Hey, Miss Candace, how are you? Yes, everybody's coming on. Come on. I need my crew to come on, like, share, tag a friend. Come on on and uh, open mic. This is open floor for all those that are watching. Let me see. I have a question. My Aunt Sylvia is on. I love Miss Sylvia. She has a question. How do you get something off your credit report that you co-sign? So, um, when you say co-sign, what did you co-sign for? A car? Candace, that's a good question. I'm going to get to that one. Latrice, you want me to talk about utilization? I knew you was going to put that out there. So, Miss Sylvia asked me about cosign. So I'm, I'm hoping she's talking about a car. When you cosign for someone, cosigning, the, the definition of a cosigner is that you are able to make the payment when someone does not or aren't able to on a loan. So, there's a variation of loans. It could be a car loan, personal loans, student loans, things like that. So when someone co-signs, that means they're unable to get the actual loan of any kind on their own. When, when, you, 
when you co-sign as a consumer, you have the right to know why you're co-signing. There are laws associated with it. If you co-sign for someone and you're not made aware and this person become default, it compromises not only their credit score, but yours as well. So when you co-sign for somebody, make sure you are told why you're co-signing. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter if the person has a low credit score or they don't have enough funding as a consumer and you're co-signing, you have a right to know. People say that's common sense. No, that's not. Because when you feel as though that you're at a dealership, for example, or you a person need a loan, and they say, well, you need a co-signer, the institution has a right to tell you why you need to co-sign. If they don't, you can get that removed off your credit report because practices wasn't followed through according to the law. I hope that answered your question. Aunt Sylvia. Miss Candace, why won't some creditors delete accounts once, once you paid them off? This is a good question. When you ask a creditor to remove or once you pay it, you you ask them to actually remove the entire trade line off your account if that's what you want this trickles back to learning how to read your reports so if the account is in collections you want the trade line removed if it's with the original creditor you will want the actual derogatory remarks and late payments removed because of credit age so the five components that we talked about previously was payment history um, credit utilization, credit age, overall credit, and mixed credit. If the, Again, if the account is in collections, ask them to remove the entire trade line. Pay to delete letters, People, a lot of people say they're standard. You should never again ask anyone to give you a pay to delete. A pay to delete should be customized to your situation. The formats and all that stuff, the credit bureau send them out different creditors send them out, and it's a setup for failure. I'm, I'm big on practicing this. When you, when you write a letter, make sure your situation is based on that letter. You do not wanna ask people for letters or templates because the templates are basically tailored to the actual person that's going through something. So if you had issues with your family, lost a job, COVID, anything, make sure your pay to delete is custom to your situation. Do not borrow or do not um, pay for letters unless you know that letter that you're getting is actually what you went through. If not, the template and all that stuff, you find these things online, they will ignore your letters and they will just keep it updated for as verify or, you know, the account stands. So you have to always make sure that you get a letter, or you construct a letter, excuse me, that when you want an item removed off your credit, if it's a collection, you want the entire account, trade line means account, the entire account off your credit report. If it's something like a credit card, you want the late payments, especially if it has credit age. So just make sure you understand the different areas of your credit report. If you remove something off your report and it has credit age on it, your score will plunge. But if it's in collections, get the entire account removed off of your credit. When you dispute with different bureaus, which I disagree with, um, you should dispute with all three bureaus. But if you go to this site called the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and my logo, well, my motto is fight feds with feds, you they do the work for you so you file the disputes on there and attach all the credit bureaus to it and guess what you don't have to pay for certified letters or anything the items get hand the items get handled through the federal government miss candace i hope that answered your question let me see good question miss reese no your business credit is totally separate to your personal credit. If you're a personal guarantor on some of your business credit, then yes, your debt to income will, um, your debt to income will um, play a factor in approvals or denials. 
one thing I say about business credit that I tell people all the time, if you have a compromise score or a fair score when it comes to your personal credit, build your personal and build your personal and business credit together. It is the best way to build credit. Um, a lot of times people want to do it separately um, because they want to hire somebody or they're unable to do it themselves. Build your personal and business credit together. It's the smartest thing you can do. Because a lot of times people don't know, when you get approved for business credit, as far as credit cards, you can add those cards to your personal credit, which will increase your score if the utilization is between 2 and 9%. So, again, if you're just using your EIN number for your business, it won't affect your personal but if you have to be a personal guarantor, meaning you have to add your social security number to be approved, then it will affect your debt to income ratio. I hope that Ms. Reese answered your question. So, someone asked me, Ms. Jones, asked me about the importance of utilization. So, during my mentoring program, I always talk about the queen. The queen is the credit utilization. So the payment history, credit age, overall credit and mixed credit are the men of the credit report. The queen is the credit utilization. I'm gonna touch briefly on this because this is something I teach in my mentoring program that's really extensive. I always say if the queen enters the room, she needs to be right because when she turns her head left and right, when she walks in the room, her utilization needs to be between 2 and 9%. The fastest way people can tear up their credit is either not having enough utilization or, not, or destroying their credit due to too much utilization. So the ideal credit utilization is between 2 and 9%. During the pandemic, you know, things happen. You have to use your actual credit cards. However, if you able to budget and utilize your credit utilization should always be between two and nine percent if your credit utilization is off you can throw off your whole credit report and it's scoring because it holds all five components it holds the payment history excuse me the utilization credit age overall credit and mixed credit there's no other area on your credit report that hold all five components but the credit cards if your credit card's utilization is not right, your report's not going to be right. Your scoring's not going to be right. A lot of people that come to me, they can't breach, well, increase in score because the queen needs company. The queen is the credit utilization. So if the queen needs company, that means she needs to be utilized and the limits need to increase. If she doesn't revolve, your credit doesn't revolve. Your credit doesn't grow. If she's at a standstill, your credit will be at a standstill. If you use too much utilization, your score will drop because the queen holds all five components. All five. So in order to understand your credit, that's one of the biggest components. They, payment history is the most abundant, but the queen that's at point 30, she runs the whole credit report. Bottom line, she runs it. Any other, okay. So why is it that once you start paying off bills, old creditors come from anywhere? From everywhere, excuse me. Statue of limitations pay, play a big part in this. A credit, um, an actual creditor can resell your credit over and over again in a seven year period. That's why it can, they say seven years or 10 years, it depends on how, what the actual um, item is. However, if you fight your credit through the federal, the federal agencies like the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, um, federal reserves and things like that, they can't resell the debt because once the people that govern them say that it cease, it cease. That's it. So a lot of times you, you'll see people that go through restoration processes and items reappear. You must go through the feds because once the feds say it's final, it's final. So try the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Um, I'll have people, you're welcome dear, you'll have people um, that might start typing in the links I'm waiting for Jasmine Patton to come on. I hope she comes on tonight. And she, she's sometimes, she's the head of Black Girls Have Good Credit too, and she'll do the typing for me. 
So, let me see. Experian has an account that's other two bureaus do not. Can you explain this? Yeah, good question, Ms. Candace. Sorry about that. Each creditor have a right to report to any bureau of their choice. A lot of people don't know. If you live closer to the bureau when you get rep when you apply for things, they deal with that bureau. So, for instance, I'm in Pennsylvania. So TransUnion is in Chester, Pennsylvania. So a lot of times when I go through approval processes, they look at my TransUnion because it's near your address. Now, if you live down south, they either do Equifax or Experian because they're in a, in a Georgia area. So it depends on where um, you live at. So that's, a, that's really important. A lot of people don't know that. If you live in near up north, they normally go and pull from TransUnion. Some places will pull from all three. However, um, they will um, pull from where you closely live to. Um, you can always go online, especially with credit cards. You'll, you'll see which ones pull from who. Um, anybody want the list, I can try to find it and send it to you because it's very beneficial and you'll know which ones to apply for or any debt. Can the feds get an item deleted? The feds get all items deleted. The feds trump everybody. Hi, Mr. Paul, how are you? The feds are Barack Obama. I always say this. The Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion are the actual secretaries. The feds are Barack. So I'm not going to go to the secretaries and dispute anything. I'm going to Barack. I need answers, and I need to know why this is on my credit report. So I, I fight feds with feds. I don't, I don't go through the credit bureaus. And don't get me wrong. People have had excellent success going through the credit bureaus. There's nothing wrong with that. Me, personally... When you want repos off and foreclosures and um, late payments of, you know, um, any of that nature, you need to deal with the feds because the feds basically govern, and, you know, the laws that must apply to you and protect you. So, yes, I deal with um, feds only. Okay, you can, send, you can send a client to me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Everybody that's coming on, please, please, please click like and share. I greatly appreciate the questions. Let's see. All right, I'll send you the list, babe. Candice, you being PA on the 17th of July. Oh, really? Well, you got to call me. Which part of PA? Yeah, let me know which part of PA. Fight feds with feds. Absolutely. I always speak about a lot of people would do like get credit restoration done and they um, they remove their inquiries. Inquiries should never be removed first. And I'll tell you why. I, I want to touch a little bit on I'll touch a touch a great deal on it. Inquiries is 10% of your overall credit report. So if you establish credit through like Capital One, Discover, Credit One, American Express, Chase, and you remove the actual inquiry, you want to remove the entire account. So when you get those accounts and you're excited because you done removed all the inquiries on phase one, the first cycle of, you know, of the reporting, like, oh my God, I raised, my score went up 20 points because I removed all my inquiries. The next go around, you lost 60 or 70 because you took away the actual positive accounts associated with inquiries. Never remove inquiries that are related to a positive account. It helps the account grow. It might be in abundance because, again, you need utilization or different accounts to build your credit. But if you remove the actual inquiries, you would destroy your credit report. Trust me, FICO calculates well. They will plunge your score. Then you'll see these type of alerts like fraud and things like that. And guess what? That's what happens. Do you suggest sending a letter to the feds or online? Um, I, I honestly um, believe in typing a letter and attaching it. Um, make sure it's Word document, Word, a Word document so they can see it. Um, a lot of times... Um, when you're doing letters to send to the credit bureaus, um, they would like to see that you sent that letter. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Who in here heard of a 623 letter? 
the 623 as far as the Fair Credit Reporting Act. This is a letter that asks for something. So if you heard of it, type in the comments what the actual letter, what, what is it, what method is used for 623s. Hi, Lexis. Oh, my lash lady is on. I love her. Lexis Reynolds. Love her. If you need your lashes done, go see her. She's the truth. So if anyone's not familiar with a 623, 623 is a method of verification. So that means if you have an item on your credit report, it, you ask what methods that you use to verify me. You send these letters via certify to the credit bureaus, which is good. A lot of people get success from them. Me, I'm going to save my $7.23 per letter times three is almost $24. If you attach that same letter, well, if you attach that same letter to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, you can send that same letter, regular mail, to the credit bureaus. They're all going to get it. Both parties are going to get it. So you can save your certified letter because when the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau alert your credit bureaus, because you're going to attach the credit bureaus to your complaint, there's your method of verification. The feds does the 623 rule, does do 623. So this letter that you ask for method for verification, instead of it coming back from Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion as verified or updated, they have to give a formal response to what methods they actually used. So that's the difference between disputing it through the credit bureaus only and also disputing it with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So I tell people, save your money. Um, if you're not familiar with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, become familiar with it because it can really not only restore your credit, but if you, when you learn to dispute and learn to read your credit reports, you can realize the errors and items on your credit report that you're not familiar with. You could dispute that way. All right. Let's see. Any other questions? If associated with a positive account and remove the inquiry, you would delete the entire file. Yes, you will. If you delete an inquiry with an actual positive account, you would delete the whole entire account. It does not matter if they give you increases, you paid it off. FICO would never calculate this within your score. It's called the dormant rule. You lie dormant. It won't even recognize it. It doesn't matter. So never delete an inquiry associated with a positive account you will literally plunge your score on the second cycle of reading by almost 70 points easy. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it. So all these, um, you get go through different companies and they send your letters out to you and you see, you see um, things like, um, this is not my report. This is not my report. This is not my account. Stay away from that because it can cause you more harm than good. Give me one second. My music is playing in the background. Oh, sorry. My music start playing in the background. So thank y'all for staying on. Let me see. Credit cards will build your actual credit score. You cannot reach a 7800 credit score without credit cards. If you find someone that did it, please send them to me because I need to know what method they use. Because me studying this, um, you, I've never seen it. You know, I was stuck in the 600s for a very long time and, and in the 700s for a very long time and I couldn't increase because I didn't have enough limits and utilization revolving. Do you need to keep two to nine percent yeah, 2 to 9% utilization every month to see maximum growth. If you do not, Sean, what's going on? If you do not see, keep that 2 to 9%, you won't maximize that 30% of credit utilization that you will want to increase your score. 
So you always want to, um, always, always want to keep between two and nine percent. It's so important. How do you delete an inquiry? If you signed up for the inquiry, do not lie and say that you didn't sign up for it because again, you know, it, you, you apply for something. Um, so you don't, um, you don't want to delete an inquiry. Um, if a lot of times people would delete inquiries that they didn't get approved for and things like that. Again, I go through the consumer financial protection bureau, um, to delete any inquiries. Um, I, if, if the inquiry is not mine or the inquiry is something that I didn't apply for, then yes, I'm going to go through them and attach that I didn't delete it. And they have to show ways and reasons that they feel as though that I, um, did actually apply for that account or anyone that I'm, you know, doing restoration processes for. So I, again, I delete them last because I want to make sure nothing associated with those inquiry inquiries will compromise my client's score by doing something, you know, a mistake and, and can actually put them in more jeopardy and do more harm than good. So I miss Daria. A lot of people are coming on. Please click like share. Um, this, this is open floor, open mic for those that are coming on, ask the questions, gain the knowledge. Um, it's free. I do this every Tuesday again for people that, you know, want to go through this process on their own. Um, and gain the knowledge that you need to even begin. Any other questions? So, 2-9% to 9 utilization is your credit card use. So, if you have a credit limit of $300, a lot of credit cards, when you're building, it starts off between $300 and $1,000. If you have, your utilization is what you spend with that limit. So if you have a limit of 300, spend like 50, $60, give or take, you know, um, they stay between that two and 9%. The more you, um, the more you utilize between two and 9% when that next reading cycle of FICO, you know, generating your score, you will see the growth. When you go over 30 or 40 and 50, you're looked at as a risk. Um, you don't capitalize on that growth and you actually can decline. Um, I went up one time when I, as I was building, I was at two to nine and went up to 20 and I plunged like almost 30 points. So again, be careful um, when it comes to credit cards. So you always want to you know, keep between that two to 9%. Again, it's the pandemic. So if you need to use your cards, use your cards. If you don't, keep them revolving. You're welcome. About how many points will credit utilization increase your score on a consistent basis? So, Candace, get your pen and paper out. I wish Latrice, I will pull Latrice on, but I'm not going to do that to her tonight. I'll do it to her another time. So, look, Miss, um, someone asked about how many points will credit utilization increase your score on a consistent basis? So anybody that wants this lesson, get your pen and paper out because this is a mathematical equation that, you know, I did on my own um, credit and it, it, it did well with. And it doesn't matter what your score is. So you got your pen and piece of paper out. So whatever your credit score is, you minus that from 850 points, because 850 is the maximized score you can get in, on your actual credit. So you take your current score, minus it by 850. Latrice, I knew you was waiting for this. I knew you was waiting for somebody to, to say this. So when you get that score, that number, this is the number that's keeping you from the 850. Your question was, how, what are the points that, that you can gain by revolving your credit monthly. You multiply that number, you subtract it, your current score, minus 850, multiply it by 0.30. Once you get that, while you're building your credit, this is the number you need point-wise to get the score where it needs to be. 
So if anybody want me to repeat that, I will gladly do so. This is, these are things I teach in my mentoring program. Um, when you want to know the, the amount of points needed to increase your score when it comes to different areas of your credit. So, so it's 850 minus the current score is the deficit. This is the number.